And for their tireless efforts to promote Jewish identity worldwide, I am proud to present on behalf of the Jewish Values Network and Rambam Hospital, the Champion of Jewish Identity Award to Dr. Miriam and Sheldon Adelson. Mazel tov. Well, I mean, your, your courtship of Mary is a stuff of legend. You took Mary out in Venice, in Italy? Is there, is, there, is there a substance to all that truth about how the Venetian came to be? Yes. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about it? We, we after we got married, we talked about where we were gonna go on a honeymoon. So we decided to take a three month honeymoon. So we actually went around the world once, maybe twice, and the place that Mary wanted to go, uh, I don't know if she came up with that idea, whatever. Both of us agreed on the idea. We went to Venice, and uh, it was at the same time that we were talking about uh, how to recreate uh, the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas. She said it was the most romantic place. If I could combine the romance of Venice with the excitement of Las Vegas and the luxury uh, with which I intended to build anyway, that we'd have a winner. She was right. I was wrong. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> She's always right. But sometimes I gave him uh, ideas and he didn't listen to me. This idea he listened. Wait, wait. So the, the idea of the Venetian was yours, Miri, because yes. every time I read it, it was Sheldon's idea when he took you on a gondola in Venice, but the idea was yours. Yes, mine. Okay. So the hotel... This, is, this goes with the territory of being a Jewish husband. <laughs> yeah. No, but what I want to say... That the ideas, the good ideas are always the wives. <laughs> No, I gave him a few other ideas and he wouldn't listen. He would refuse to do them. For example, one day I saw in a convention center some theme of Paris and uh, the Parisian painters, etc. So I came, why wouldn't we do Paris? And he said, nah, and he refused to do it. But when I came and said, why wouldn't we do Venetian? <laughs> yes. So he knew when to listen to me, when to, to take my advice and when not to take my advice. Okay. Well, it seems like someone else took your advice about Paris. There's another, there's another casino called Paris. So it's after. after, after we're doing, okay. Probably somebody heard my idea. That's right, they heard maybe your I idea. Okay. Some, maybe I, I see should have some... Uh, some shrimp. royalties. I see a lawsuit coming. No, no, no. We're Absolutely doing Paris not. in Macau. Oh, you're doing Paris in Macau? Yes, we are. It's called okay. Parisian, and it's going to be a 50% scale of the Eiffel Tower. Wow. And then wow. I go to my wife and say, boss, I did the right thing. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, it seems to me that my wife only costs me money. I'm wondering why I don't get these incredibly lucrative ideas. Uh, Debbie's here somewhere. No, on Shabbat she doesn't cost money because there is no shopping. That's true, Miri, but all the shopping before Shabbat, I can assure you, costs a lot of money. Um, the two of you share a phenomenal passion for Israel. Talk to us a little bit about that. Sheldon, uh, you, you and Miri just became honorary citizens of Jerusalem. I was there. You both spoke about that this past Tuesday as being one of the great honors of your life. You mentioned how your father never even got to Israel. He was too poor. Your father was too poor to ever visit Israel. But here you are being made an honorary citizen of the, of the holy city of Jerusalem, Israel's eternal capital. How did that feel? And what did you, did you think about your father while that happened? How did it feel? Well... It's very interesting that we're here tonight with, Jewish, with the Jewish Values Network. Um, I think that's what it's all about. Uh, how did I feel? My father was a very poor man, and he couldn't afford, I'm not crying yet, he couldn't afford to go to Israel. And by the time we, his children, could afford to send him, he was too old and he was too sick. But he taught me about nobility. You know, the Jewish people don't have a monarch. 
There's nobody out there to take a sword and touch us on the shoulders and whack us on the head and do whatever is necessary to anoint us a sir or a lord or a, uh, or a count or a countess or even a hey you. There's nobody out there. So nobility, to be noble and to consider yourself part of a world full of, a world of Jewish people, I believe brings out the nobility in one. It comes from the heart, it comes from the mind. I don't know too many Jewish wives that call their husbands noble. <laughs> it's the, wives, the husbands that have to call the wives noble. But nobility is something that we Jewish people uh, d don't, we don't have titles for it. We have to think of nobility from the heart. And what does nobility to us mean? Jews have been persecuted for time immemorial. From the time of uh, uh, the Roman period, there were 10 million Jews at the time of the Romans, 10 million. And yet today we're only 13 and a half million, hardly growing at all. And the one thing the Jews have been dreaming about for thousands of years, acceptance, first-class citizenship, assimilation, is turning out to be our undoing. Today, there's only 42% of young Jewish people between the age of 18 and 26 that say they intend to marry within the religion and or bring their children up Jewish. If we here today don't do something to keep our family together, this family of 13 and a half million people, we won't continue. And I think nobility is to be a mason to work with stone and to mix the cement that connects one generation of Jews to the next. So since we can't give out certificates of nobility, we could at the very least think about it and act like it, whether or not somebody else approves. And I don't think there is anything more noble that a Jewish people, a Jewish person could do than to mix that cement and connect one generation to the other. Lador Vador. <laughs> you know, like in baseball, there's a DH, a designated hitter. Right. When somebody got into trouble, when the Jewish kid got into trouble, they say, you fool around with me, you fool around with Adelson. <laughs> I think I looked tough. I really wasn't tough until somebody called my bluff. Next thing I know, I, was I woke up in a hospital. <laughs> what I want to say about the Jewish family is something that we experienced 1990 or so. There's a gentleman in the audience, I can't see him because of the lights here, his name is Erwin Chaffetz. He's one of God's most beautiful people. He and Teddy Bernard, Teddy Cutler, and I decided that when the Jews were being let go from the Soviet Union and they were allowed to emigrate to Israel, they had to do so through either Budapest or I think it was also uh, Vienna. And the local federation put on a hardcore full court press to raise the money to charter the aircraft to bring the people standing on the tarmac in Budapest to take them to Israel. So Erwin and Teddy and I decided we would charter a plane. But for some reason, both Aaron and I couldn't go, and only Teddy, Teddy could go that time. And Teddy went, and when he came back, I was 
very curious to see what it was like, to ask him what it was like. And he said to me, I said, Teddy, what was it like? And he said, Sheldon, it was like my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. I said, Teddy, I didn't know you had relatives on that flight. He said, no, no, no. He said, they were all my relatives. They looked like my aunt, my uncle, my cousins. And that validated to me. I said, how did they act? He said, just like my aunts and uncles and cousins. <laughs> you mean like well, everything we saw tonight, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With the, uh, the mob, okay. So we're all a family. And we are all one big family. And that's why Mary and I think about the Jewish people and those of us that can help out the rest of our family. We don't have an obligation to do so. We don't have a responsibility to do so. We receive an honor for doing so. It's an honor. I said, Penny, how did they act? He said, just like my relatives. I said, what did they carry? He said, Others took a b little birds they took with them. Somebody took a dog. He said, that was our family. And that validated to me that the Jewish people are all one. I'm Israel Chai. I'm Israel Chai. <laughs> okay, I have uh, two final questions. First of all, have you met uh, Dr. Mehmet Oz and Lisa Oz tonight? I have the privilege of sitting right next to him. Okay, great. Uh, well, Sheldon, I want to know that you watch his show. Do you watch Mehmet's show? I don't have time to watch television. <laughs> to be honest. Maybe he should. Mehmet, how do we, how do we persuade... Watch. Mehmet, how do we persuade a very busy man to watch your show? You gotta change the time. <laughs> 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 Will you have Sheldon on? Uh, okay, no, the well, problem maybe. is... My wife will probably whisper to him and say, tell him to eat right and lose weight. <laughs> you don't want Mehmet coming to your house, okay? I have never overcome the guilt. If you think that Jews have guilt, I don't know what Mehmet did to me. I told you, Mehmet, I have not touched Coca-Cola, 7-Up, no sugary drinks ever since. It's like he's made them unkosher to me. Now our Shabbos dinners, ever since Mehmet and Lisa come for Shabbos dinner, our, our, our Shabbos dinners are sugar-free. So unless you're prepared to do that, Sheldon. Now, I actually have had dinner. I'm prepared to yeah, we, everything is sugar-free at our home. I know. I've, been, I've had dinner at your and home. fat-free in our home. But a lot of food. <laughs> but you play the role of Dr. Mehmet Oz in the life of Sheldon Adelson, correct, Mary? You watch everything he eats. I am a police woman okay. at our home. <laughs> like many other women here, right? <laughs> does, he, does he respect the authority of the police, or does he sneak little desserts here and there? At he, my own. He, at, no, no, at no, my no. Own he's, he's, he's respected. He doesn't, he doesn't do uh, behind my back anything. However, in front of me, he <laughs> wants more and more and more food. Okay. I'm in front of her when her eyes are closed. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I had uh, the pleasure of having dinner uh, at your home for dinner a few times with my wife, Debbie. And by the way, I have not acknowledged how vital Debbie has been to this evening. And, uh, Where's Debbie? Um, you know, Miri, as you know, my wife is kind of like me. She's very shy. You know, she doesn't like attention. Come on, stand very, up, Debbie. She doesn't like Debbie. attention. I don't where know where are you? she is. Debbie? Uh. Okay. You know, and, and, and Sheldon, I, I see you going through the Venetian uh, on your scooter, your security personnel trying to keep up, your assistants, and I also want to acknowledge Betty Yersich, who is uh, Shelton's personal assistant of 30 years, an incredible woman. We do, uh, Betty facilitates everything. God bless you, Betty. And I see, I see everyone, I see, it trying to, I see them trying to keep up. And you're a model of a man who has 50,000 employees. You, won one of the world's, you run one of the world's largest corporations. You've given 50,000 jobs to people. You're one of the world's biggest donors. Yet you come home to two teenage sons. <laughs> And you try to get them to sit down for dinner. And like all teenage kids, you know, dad, we're busy and everything. What's that like to go from the height of power to utter powerlessness where no one's going to listen to you because you are just the father of another two American teenagers? How lucky can we get? <laughs> What's it like being the father of two teenagers? 
fantastic. I really do feel young again. Well, I'm always young. The new 80, 80 is the new 60. <laughs> There can't be that many 80-year-olds in the audience. <laughs> and how do you ensure that Adam and Matan have a Jewish identity? The school, the Adelson Educational Campus. Uh, the Did you build that large... You, 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 it's a gift from you and Miri to the people of Las Vegas, the Jewish community of Las Vegas. Yes. It's the nicest campus of any Jewish day school I've ever seen. It's like a university campus. Of any I wish I could go to school again, and I hated school, so that would be nice. Of any Jewish night school, too. <laughs> Not only a day school. And you and Mary are very involved as parents. Yes, we are. You're there all the time, Mary. One of only two boards of directors that I sit on besides my, my own. So the Adelson Educational Campus, your, your kid's school, and Las Vegas Sands. Las Vegas Sands. Okay. And Mary, raising two teenage kids and giving no, them a the, Jewish the identity? Israeli Air Force Foundation Center. Who had a dinner here last year and you were there. Correct. Right, here in New York City. And Mary, what's it like raising two teenage boys and giving them a Jewish identity? Well, I, I don't need to give. They, they are growing up in atmosphere uh, of Jewish identify, identity in Israel. They, are Isra they have Israeli passport. We are going many times a year to Israel. Every summer for sure. We are going in 10 days and, uh, after school is over immediately. And uh, so they, they visit army camps, they, they visit all over Israel, they saw more of Israel of, more than me. And they study in school, they, every morning the school, they're, they're singing a tikva in the school. Big flag of Israel in the entrance of school, as well as Nevada flag and American flag. Uh, so, and I'm talking, trying to talk Hebrew to them, they're answering in English. But all my family is in Israel, my, and their two sisters are Israelis, and they are here, and we are talking Hebrew. And we have all the mentality of Israelis. So they, I would say they are at least 50% Israelis, and they, they grow, they, they look at our values, and they, we install in them our values. And that's the way I'm sure that they will be 100% Israelis in the future. Maybe they will study in Israel, maybe they will serve in the army, I don't know yet. We'll see. Adam was born at a very early age. <laughs> and until he was one, his, his passport shows that he was in Israel eight times. Wow. There were eight stamps that he entered Israel before he was one. So they have a very strong identity. Anyway, Sheldon and Miriam, thank you very much for being our champions of Jewish identity. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.